Good day and welcome to a new video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hey and welcome today. You're joined by uh, me, Daniel, and also today we've got uh, Lodi Mondolini. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Lodi Mondolini. Awesome. Um, you can check out her artwork at um, Lodi Mondolini at artstation.com. Um, and any, do you have any other social platforms as well? Uh, I also have an Instagram. It's uh, the same name, basically. Yeah. Um, and that's about it, yeah. Awesome. That's pretty cool, yeah. The links will be down below. Um, yeah, so feel free to, you know, down below in the YouTube um, video when it gets posted. It will be down there in the description if anyone is interested um, and everything like that. All, all my artists I do that with. Um, did it in so it's easy to find them if you do want to find them a bit later. Um, yeah, awesome. So, uh, yeah, tell me a bit about yourself. Uh, so, hey everyone. Uh, I'm uh, basically a French concept artist. I'm currently working in the UK at Frontier Development. Uh, I've been working on Planet Zoo mainly. And before that, I've been doing a little bit of freelance. I worked for um, some small indie company on a VR game named um, Eco. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Well, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that was re really cool projects. Yeah. Um, lately, I've been hearing that you've you've done quite a few hours of work. You've been quite busy. Yeah, um, I've also been doing some uh, online classes uh, on top of my um, my full time job. So yeah, that's why I've been pretty busy. Ah, awesome. Is that um, where's that through? Uh, it is for um, a school in France. It's called Outside. It's really good. Uh, really good school. It's, it's private, sadly. Um, and I'm not. I'm not doing a lot of uh, tutorials or anything because I'm not super. Um, it's not necessarily that I'm not confident about it. It's just that I don't think uh, my process for now is uh, is worth showing. I would say, or it's not as perfect as I'd like it to be. So I'm still gonna work on it, and uh, maybe someday do some <laughs> public tutorials. Yeah, it does. It does take a while to kind of, um, in a way, kind of process your process. You know, like uh, trying to exactly, yeah, find out how totally. you how you do things and you know how that can help others um you know it does well, it, yeah 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 and also it's been um it's it's been actually uh like when i've done these online classes this week i kind of realized that a lot of stuff that seem obvious to me are not to everyone so i had to stop and explain stuff that i would have never thought i needed to explain so yeah definitely i don't um like i often tell myself well why would you even do a tutorial? Because uh, there's nothing complicated in your in your um, in your process, and it's pretty straightforward. So I guess uh, people don't necessarily need a tutorial, but actually, maybe it might help some people. So hmm. definitely, anything small, um, it can help someone. You know. Yeah, that's um, true. Surprisingly, you know, it, um, it's like. I don't know how to how to start a car or something like that. You know, there's heaps of videos online about that um, kind of thing. You know, everyone should know it. You know, if if you're driving or something like that, but not everyone does. Um, and it's surprising. There's little things like that. Um, and same with painting. You know, painting grass or something like that. Mm. Uh, you know, for me, I've had struggles painting grass my my whole you know artistic journey. I still do, and um, yeah, it's it's great to see some people paint painting mm. in a in a new way or um, trialing their um, their their process of painting a certain thing like grass or, or yeah environment. And even <laughs> even if you don't necessarily struggle with something, it's always good to see someone else process because you can always learn stuff. Mm. Um, like I I don't know how to do grass either, but um, let's say for hot surface stuff. Um, that was basically basically my main um, what well, what I know how to do, um, but I always like sh seeing other people showing how they do it because 
well, it's a different process and it's always good to add to your library of process because it might like it might be an opportunity for you to try this process instead of yours. So yeah, it's always uh, always good to have different ways of doing stuff. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, a you know it's a new tool um, that you can use. You know, hmm. you never. I kind of think that you're never going to learn it all. Um, and it's great to have that mindset. You know that you never learn it Definitely. all. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. If you have the opposite, you know, if you think you've learned it all. Um, hmm. then, you know, it kind of um, goes against you because, you know, you think you've known it all, um, you don't want to absorb any more information or, you know, you just think you you know it all. Um, well, how are you going to pro- progress if you, if you think you've already achieved everything and it's not possible to achieve everything? Every single, even the best artists of this world, they're still learning from other people, and that's why you you see them experimenting a lot. Actually, when you see people like um, Jama Drabaev, um, is is basically it seems like he's been doing everything, like experimenting with VR, with 3D, with heavy rendering and stuff like that. And it's because he's still he's still trying to learn new new stuff, and that's what is what makes him a good artist. It's because he's constantly searching for new process and new techniques. Exactly. Yeah, it's always great to have like an open mind and always want to, to move forward. Um, I think, you know, with teaching as well, um, doing online courses, those, those kind of things as well, um, it does teach you things because you have to, you know, process it all um, and try and teach them <laughs> what you know. Yeah. Well, it, it actually tells you a lot about your own process that you're maybe not necessarily aware of. Um, but also, yeah, it's it's teaching you a lot because you have to go through your process and be like, actually, does that make sense when I do that? Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a good um, it's a good way to actually learn yourself too. It's awesome. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I've been, you know, I do weekly tips every week on my on my channel, and it's interesting because mm-hmm. it does help me because I, I I see things that I do, um, I teach things, just little tips and and tricks and things, you know. Um, it, it means to be like you know five minute videos about me discussing something. Um, yeah, and it's interesting because I have to process what I'm you know talking about. I still have to make kind of the video enjoyable in a way, uh, and those things. Which yeah, I kind of learn a lot from it. Um, it's great to do. Yeah, it's not it's not only for other people. It's also for yourself that you do this kind of tutorials. Hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully, you know, one day that will help someone um, in some way or form. I'm sure they already helped a lot of people. <laughs> I was, I remember when I was a student, I was so desperate for tutorials and anything that basically I could learn. I, I was basically lucky to to learn in a, an actual school. But nowadays, um, a lot of people are self-taught. So this kind of resources is just... Um, so important because nobody, I mean, not everyone can go to um, an art school or something like that or 3D school or whatever. And um, this kind of tutorials, free tutorials, um, any kind of resource is good to take, basically. Hmm. I mean, it's great. Even if you are, you know, studying and learning through course and stuff, um, you know, some courses don't teach you everything or um, certain amounts of things. Uh, I think with mine, my course um, that I did, we kind of the technical side of things, you know, like you know how to paint grass or how to um, draw this or how to design that kind of a thing, um, wasn't kind of taught. It was more like the whole process thing, how to do your research, um, how to take your research and you know do the design and and the illustration and stuff like that. That side of things just more taught and the technical side we kind of had to you kind of learn on our own in a way by just trialing mm-hmm. and doing and watching videos online and all the all that stuff that's available to us yeah and then yeah well you also have um other classes that kind of talked about um a bit more um more concept things i would say like um 
um, storytelling, narration in your illustrations and that kind of stuff. So really you have a whole different um, panel of different stuff you can learn. It, there's just so much to learn. Mm. So every artist can definitely bring his own stone to the to the cathedral, basically, of, uh, of the whole knowledge that concept art is. Mm -hmm. There's so much to learn. That was a crappy metaphor, but... <laughs> mm. Awesome. So I looked at your, your, your art station. I see that mm -hmm. uh, you have the first post, you know, it's four, four years, roughly, it said. Um... Uh, hang on, let me get my... <laughs> There are some old stuff in there that probably sure, but uh, yeah. for some of my drawings, I'm still attached to it, and I shouldn't. But yeah. I'm probably gonna eat all of this soon. Yeah, so well. yeah, the the first post, uh, the not thing, not Nordic night goddess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so this one, it was um, actually I was still a student four years ago. And I was really looking for my uh, my style, my own style. And um, I decided that my own style was basically lowish style. So mm -hmm. like a lot of students <laughs> did at the time. Yeah. So yeah, I was I was really looking, like searching for my style at that at that time. Mm. And uh, it was a not test I did for um, an indie company. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, definitely not my favorite piss. <laughs> but... <laughs> I basically learned that I'm not good at characters. I have to work on that, but for now, I just want to focus on environment. And yeah, characters are... It's definitely not my strength. Mm. Um, but it's okay to have a um, lack of knowledge on some points, because you can't mm. you can't really learn everything. I'm still pretty young. Like, I'm, I'm 24. I still have a, a long way to go. And I, I kind of wanted to focus on environment, because industry-wise, it's... Um, and first, first of all, I prefer making environments generally. Mm -hmm. And in the industry, you're gonna you're gonna need more environment concept artists and character concept artists. Yeah. So it was uh, it was a bit of both basically that made me decide that characters. Maybe I'm gonna do it later, but for now, it's not necessarily my main focus, mm. as enough. you can <laughs> tell <laughs> on my illustrations. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. That's interesting, that, that piece. Um, I think on DeviantArt they're doing a challenge at the moment to draw one of Loish's pieces um, mm -hmm. for their, I think it's 20, 25 year anniversary um, for DeviantArt. At 20 okay. Years. It must have been 20 years. Yeah, she started on DeviantArt, like a lot of artists did mm. at the time. But yeah, she she's so very popular and she's crazy talented and she has a very specific style. And since she's very popular, a lot of people try to basically mimic her style mm. without quite making their own stuff. And it's a bit mm -hmm. too bad because, yeah. well, she's loyal, she's making it the way she is and she will always do it better than you do because well it's her style so i see a lot of students that are very and myself i've made the exact same mistake yeah. um are basically fangirling loish and she, she's crazy talented i totally understand that you 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 basically fangirl at her and it's it's a good person to fangirl mm -hmm. but um it's just that yeah a lot of people tend to not uh, detach from her style mm -hmm. so kind of always stay in that in her shadow basically and that's a bit too bad because if they were just um straying a bit further from this very specific side they could definitely develop their own with that kind of base basically mm, exactly um mm. you know it's it's great to learn from them you know uh, maybe copy their art and and stuff like that for a little while mm. uh, just to to learn and find their process and and you know how the way they do things and things like that um but yeah you won't have your own voice by just doing that um but yeah you definitely learn a lot from it i did it uh back at course because i'm a big oh, you know, yeah. i'd say fanboy um of bobby chio he's you know one of uh, my most favorite artists um and yeah i did uh back at 
my course I did a hit one of his paintings um, that I ended up doing I was yeah, made a project out of it <laughs> or something like that and I was like I'll, you know I'll do this for this project um, make sure I try to copy his painting word by word pretty much just to you know see how he does things um, but it's kind of um, not the only thing I've done like that as well I think it was a little bit later I uh, my process for doing my illustrations for for my book at mm -hmm. course that I was creating um, I started off like trying to find a kind of style for the characters and how they they fit um, so you know broke down kind of a couple of other styles you know kind of different variety of styles um, you know a style similar to the the way I was painting now um, yeah a style that was kind of more flat 2d kind of uh, illustrator based like the program illustrator based you know vector art kind of stuff yeah yeah I see what you mean and um, yeah and something a bit more elaborate than that you know like different yeah. styles different levels of illustrations and what? broke them up and see what ca my characters would kind of look like in those different um styles. that's exactly the way you're supposed to do it basically you're supposed to kind of um analyze um the styles of other artists and then based on what you analyze you kind of make up your own style with a patchwork of stuff you like from each artist basically and that is basically defining your your own style um, as opposed to copying exactly someone's style, even if it's a great exercise to um, to basically do redo an entire illustration that someone did, you're basically doing a study of an illustration, and that's a great way to learn. But then you kind of have to go further a bit further, and um, and yeah, analyzing what you liked on that stuff and taking it to integrate in your own process, basically. Mm. I think, um, yeah, Bojo Chio is doing something really awesome at the moment. He's taking, uh, since like lockdown and things like that, um, he's mm -hmm. done where he, he takes a, a painting um, that he's seen. It might be quite famous. It might be um, just something he's, he's kind of found. Um, and then, you know, he paints it quite a few times, you know, to get the whole mood and, and everything of the... The painting and then he creates something a creature um in that style which is really no, that's fantastic. See, you know like um yeah definitely <laughs> it's great to see that you know and some of the other artists that are in there as well doing it with him because he invites everyone to do it with him and you know mm -hmm. some of the the paintings that are created from that is it's awesome to see <laughs> It's also very humble to basically say, okay, I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I'm gonna um, get out of my comfort zone and do the style of someone else. So like, it's, I feel like it's a really good, um, it, it's a really good thing to do because it, it shows that you're humble enough to recognize that someone might have a better style, not a better, better style, but might be worth trying his style, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really humble and I really like that, that process. Let's say you, you kind of can't stay away from things that you don't like. Like, for instance, for me, um, anatomy has been a big thing for me. I've never really liked drawing humans and those kind of things. Mm. Um, but, you know, when it comes to when I want to, really need to draw it for some reason, I don't back away from the challenge anymore. Um, and I just mm. you know, try different things. <laughs> Yeah, just don't be afraid. And you're if you're still learning and you're in a learning process, you don't learn by just making everything right. You learn by making mistakes. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you have a challenge, just jump on it because it's going to be the best way for you to learn. And that's why it's totally okay for students to make mistakes because they're, they're here to make mistakes. If they, <laughs> they have one time to make mistakes, it's now when you're studying. So... Mm -hmm. Well, it's a safety net at the moment, you know, you're at course. Um, usually you're not working on real jobs, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's usually briefs they give you and things like that. It's not a real paid job that 
someone will get really mad if you design it, you know, create it real bad. Exactly. So you've got safety net there to use if you need it. Um, exactly when you're doing like personal work, you have that kind of safety net with it. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As well. So it's great to use that, you know, use whatever time you have to try and develop that. Yeah. But I feel at the moment there's some kind of pressure, even if it's for personal work. Um, I've, I've heard that several times already. Um, people feel like they don't have a safety net because um, all the work they're doing for the personal development, they end up publishing it on social media. Mm. So people are going to judge it anyway, even if, it's, if, it, even if in the first place you made it for yourself. And you probably made mistakes. People are going to judge it because it's going to be on social media. So they have that fear of not making things right. And that can be um, a break to your progress because you're like, okay, I'm just going to make stuff I know how to do mm. because um, I need to publish on social media and I need people to like it. So if it's a bit less good, um, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be bad for my portfolio or bad for my social media. And that's that's kind of a kind of a problem I've been um, I've been stumbling upon because uh, yeah I was at some point I basically stopped making stuff that I didn't know how to do. I'm exactly the same as you are. I hate making characters just because I'm a terrible at anatomy. I'm really bad at that, yeah. and I don't like doing that. And um, and basically I I just stopped making it and. Uh, because it, it wasn't working obviously <laughs> and uh, and yeah it's it's a problem because I, I still need to work on that but um i it's, it's kind of a, a big big pressure if you have social media you're like i need to publish stuff but then on the other hand i also need to do bad stuff because i need to get better at that mm. so yeah yeah well there's you know there's always times where i'm developing things and you know, my skills like my anatomy I'm not there's a lot of drawings out there that I do I don't post to social media you know it's just me practicing and, mm. um, and things like that but you know it on even on social media um, with my Instagram um, I do daily four sketches a week um, that I post and you know they're not that great usually sometimes uh they are they get to a good stage um but they're usually not that great you know it's only me drawing with it's them. sketches yeah yeah sketches you know it's only like half an hour or something like that um you know some are more elaborate than others some days are better some days are you know just a little doodle but you know i keep on going and i still post it with a what level it is you know um yeah but it's uh, <sighs> For me, it's the practice of doing it every day, kind of definitely getting, getting into a routine and and keeping kind of keeping the drive alive. Um, because for me, you know, I'm doing I'm full time work, and then I I come home and paint. Um, so you know, sometimes um, you know, I don't get a lot of drawing done. So just getting half an hour does make me happy. <laughs> it kind of a thing. Um, mm. that I've done a little bit for my day and you know yeah yeah <laughs> and it's, it's actually a good escape from uh, a full-time job when you're just uh, well you're just doodling on your own and you're just letting your mind escape and it's it's a good uh, it's a good um, it's a good relaxation basically after after a long day of work um, when I do personal work, sometimes it's just a pain in the butt. I don't want to do it. And uh, I mean, in the first place, I really don't want to do it. I'm like, oh, fuck. I would prefer just playing Guild Wars and just not <laughs> yeah. not draw at all. But I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do like 30 minutes and see how it goes. And in the end, it's just so different from what I do um, on my work work that it's actually quite refreshing. And it's always welcome to just doodle a little bit yeah i think it's definitely hard at the start sometimes um yeah it's just yeah getting over that starting of it um it's kind of like going to the gym kind of a thing you don't really want to go to the <laughs> it's gym <so> true. <laughs> but when you're at the yeah. gym you know it's all good <laughs> it's 
you know, you you have Yeah, to... once you're into it, it's just go it goes pretty smoothly, but hmm. man, it's hard to start. <laughs> and it's the same for everyone. I mean, for everyone. I don't know everyone, but I see so many artists online that like doing 12 pieces uh, of personal work every day, plus having a full-time job, plus making mentorship and stuff like that. How do you find it time and motivation to do that? And sometimes I've got motivation, but sometimes I'm just a slug and I don't want to do anything and stay on my sofa playing video games. Yeah. And that's also all right. It happens sometimes and it's fine. Yeah, yeah I felt that like there's a lot of pressure of well, being productive and do tons of stuff, tons of personal work, even if it's important. Like you can't progress if you don't do personal work on a regular basis. Mm. But uh yeah you can have a little break sometimes too and you gotta be healthy with it you know you can't um kind of force yourself to do it too much <laughs> um, yeah but at some point you're just not gonna basically i would say at the point where you're not even enjoying after 30 minutes um maybe you need a break because hmm. it's, it's nice to force yourself in the first place and then if it goes smoothly after that that initial burst of motivation if it goes smoothly it's all right but if after 30 minutes one hour it's still hard and you can't do it and it's just being a pain in the butt well just have a break honestly hmm. it's not going to kill you to not work for one day hmm. it's only going to make your work a bit more interesting hmm. the, the following day yeah exactly i find that it does help you know um i i've had pieces where you know it's like how do i fix this or you know, having struggles with it, you know, just getting kind of a little frustrated, but too much frustrated with it sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, just, you know, yeah. taking a break, doing something else, or, um, yeah, just... And my it's, mind. it's actually not, it's not because you're not drawing that you're not working in a way like um if you're watching a movie or playing a video game or doing anything that is remotely related to art it is actually filling your visual library even just going to a museum um going outside um in the city uh taking photographies of building that is a bit different than drawing per se but it's still very good to um, make your visual library bigger and have more influences, and it's always good, basically. Exactly. You know, it it, it does help, you know, going for a walk. Um, you get inspirations in life from that, you know, just going to the museum or playing a video game or something like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to do. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't invent everything out of nothing you need inspirations and well there's inspiration you'll find it in real life um even if it's to do stylized stuff like literally all the stuff i do all my props they're inspired by stuff uh, that i find in real life like you know pot trees and stuff like that um pieces that i found in museum pieces i find on pinterest too uh i'm not special i'm not <laughs> only going in museum and uh, I don't know, scratching my beard while looking at heart. Uh, I go in Pinterest like everyone else, and that's my main source of references. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's still... I mean, you need influences and references that are a bit different than only what you find on station, basically. So mm. any kind of, a, of a media is good for you. Awesome. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, this... Um... I'd say this year has been very interesting to see the what's been happening in the world. Um, do you think mm. you've learned anything um, from this year so far? So when you talk about this year, like the the events of this year? Yeah, most yeah, pretty much. Um. Well, I've basically learned to give myself a break. Because I don't know for you, but um, my most of my inspiration it comes from what I see outside, and um, like going to events and um, talking to people, seeing movies and and uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's basically my main source of inspiration, more than Pinterest actually. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, yeah, not having that. I kind of um, 
I kind of had the, the syndrome of the white page, basically. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to learn at all. And I was absolutely dry. I, I, I didn't know what to do. I, was no, I had no inspiration whatsoever. So um, I, I got really frustrated over that. And then um, I think it's Alex Konstad, or I can't remember who posted that on their Instagram story. And they said, um, uh, no, it, it wasn't that. I think it was Loish, actually. She said um, that a lot, of, a lot of artists are facing the same thing. And uh, it's hard for them to find inspiration during the lockdown. And it is all right. It happens to everyone and you don't have to be productive all the time. So that's what I would I would, I would say I learned this year. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it did the same thing for you, did it? Um, yeah, some, you know, um, for me it was a bit different because I was still working um, in everything. So... Mm. But, you know, I did learn um, a bit about that, you know, that I didn't get to go see movies. Um, I haven't, I don't know if I'll be going to the movies for a little while because, you know, it doesn't look like there's too many movies to go see. <laughs> and, and that kind I of I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it looked like when I was looking at going to see movies, there was like some old um, movies that they were playing, which was interesting. When, um, well, yeah, it's been kind of kind of complicated for movies at the moment, and uh, we used to have platforms, but it's not the same thing. It's um, I don't know. It's not the same experience as going in a in a theater and having a proper movie experience. So yeah, and and even now, I mean, I'm I'm living in the UK, um, and. At the moment, I wouldn't feel very comfortable going in a, in a movie theater and uh, being in the same room as everyone uh, for like two hours. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. But, but maybe it's just me. Yeah. yeah. I think I've learned to kind of appreciate them a bit more. You know, there's experience of going to the movies exactly. and doing other stuff that's you know, outside of art and um, those things. And yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. Then you realize that it's actually a big part of your inspiration. Maybe you don't real, you didn't realize that in the first place before when you had the occasion to do that. But well, it's once you don't have, you don't have it, and you realize you miss it. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know. But <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, you keep going. Uh, I'd say basically uh, what kind of saved me during the quarantine and stuff um, and basically staying in lockdown, it's um, it's the Art Station Challenge. Basically, if you don't have any inspiration, put your, give yourself constraints. And um, so it could be a challenge having a, a specific milestone. It doesn't need to be an Art Station Challenge, but it could be a challenge you do uh, with friends. Uh, you each... Um, each person sets some kind of theme and everyone um, kind of does the same uh, the same thing, the same exercise. And at the end of, I don't know, two weeks, you guys kind of compare to each other's and uh, make some kind of little challenge between each other's can be a good, uh, a good motivation. So basically, in this kind of times, just give yourself constra constraints is a, is a good way to get over lack of motivation. Say. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think, you know, with um, so my YouTube channel, having that constraint there, because I've got to um, make so much content each week um, for these videos to keep them running. Mm. So that gives me somewhat of a constraint. I've got to kind of finish a piece roughly every two weeks. I can, you know, I can give myself a little bit of break here and there. But, um, you know, so I've got some kind of restraint keeping me going, and that's been great to, to have that little bit of restraint pushing me forward. <laughs> Definitely, you've got a rhythm that you have to keep, and it's, it's, it's great for not only motivation, but progress too. Hmm. But, yeah, it's, a, it's always a struggle, though, because it's, you know, never going to get that in that perfect sweet spot. And I'm always going to have battles with it. Some weeks I'm doing good and I'm, I'm keeping up and other weeks I'm really rushing, pulling, um, well, not really pulling all-nighters, but just really, really going at it and um, 
and things like that. So it, you know, I'm never gonna find the balance, but yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's it's <laughs> you can definitely find the balance at some point. You're gonna find it. It's but it's literally everyone has ups and downs in terms of art. Like sometimes you're really happy about a piece you're gonna do, and the other the next time it's gonna be you absolutely hate everything you do. Um, and it happens to everyone. It happens to me literally all the time. And I tend to hate everything I do. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's some some days it just works better than others. And kind of have to accept it sometimes. Yeah, I, <laughs> even I, if it I, can be a bit frustrating. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, I just you know accept what I get done um, when I can get done. Um, if... Definitely. Um, with also not kind of uh, going full stop, you know, just giving up on it. Um, so I never kind of give up on it. Yeah, definitely not being like not giving up as soon as there's a bit of challenge, but basically kind of being a bit more forgiving with yourself. Um, like saying, okay, I did great last week. Um, it's all right if this week. It's going a bit less smoothly. I'm just gonna go with the flow, and, um, and most of the time, actually, it kind of unlocks something because you have less uh, pressure on yourself. Or I don't know, but sometimes um, when you tell yourself, "Okay, it's fine," just get either a break or just don't worry about it and just keep drawing and um, mm -hmm. see how it goes. It actually, tends to go a bit better if you you don't care, <laughs> basically. Exactly. It's, uh, it's when you like, care a bit less. Yeah, when you care a little bit less. Mm. Um, I think they want to think about, like, you know, uh, bigger goals versus, like, smaller goals. Um, you know, with bigger goals are harder to achieve and things like that. <laughs> and you've got to take more time and pressure, and it's all mm. there. But with little goals, you're kind of um, not so worried about them. You're still keeping them up, but there's less pressure there to keep them up keep them going yeah well definitely publishing on on your youtube channel uh regularly is is a big goal that you have to achieve like every two week let's say hmm. and uh like finishing an illustration every two week is a big goal and then you have a smaller goal i don't know and it kind of it still gives you wins when you need the win basically hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, well, you know, with my weekly tips, uh, those are kind of smallish for me, small kind of things I can do, um, and that can, you know, that can take me five or a couple of hours to do the video, um, you know, it's a really small kind of time frame I can do it in. <laughs> well, where... it's just pretty big already, <laughs> it's yeah. a big commitment. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, and it's, yeah, it's a weekly thing, so... <laughs> it's kind of big, but it, it's kind of small as well because it's only. Well, you're used you know, to doing it, so. Yeah. <laughs> Get used to it. It's still, yeah, it's still struggling because sometimes, some weeks, I don't need, I like Sunday night or something comes, that's when I kind of record it. Um, and it's already like 9 pm at night. I don't have any ideas uh, to do. I'm still sitting there thinking about what ideas while I'm doing something else, maybe. So sometimes it's like, oh, just get it pieced together. Um, mm. And sometimes I've got like two weeks worth of content in advance. So it's up and down battles, but it's still, you know, achievable. So that's what's great. Well, yeah, but. <laughs> That's that's a pretty big thing, I'd say. Honestly, it's pretty pretty big goal. But yeah, yeah, I guess you're used to do it, so you you do it really not easily, but you do it maybe um as maybe a bit easier to do a um a small tutorial rather than a full illustration. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like, basically. Yeah, you know, it, it's not as much pressure with these illustrations. Um, they yeah, I've got got two weeks to do them um but i'll keep that going so i've got to do probably um three or four hours a week at least um yeah so there's a little bit bigger time frame for that um at least i mean there's also you know that's 
only recorded time is the actual deciding what to do with it. Sometimes I play around with it. Um, yeah. And just sit there and think sometimes. Um, and things like that that I do that's not recorded. So there's also, you know, it's probably like two or three hours a night or something. Um, so you don't, you don't, when you're making a big illustration like that, you don't recall the whole process, but what do you recall basically in uh, that kind of illustrations? Probably about, um, I would say about 75% of it's recorded. Um, the rest might be like trying train an overlay layer and seeing if that works um yeah or multiply or whatever um and playing around with darkness and things like that and seeing what works here and there um maybe looking at uh someone else's process or something if sometimes uh mm -hmm. seeing what they do and trialing there and see if that works you know the, the, some of that stuff i don't really you know, 100% comfortable with recording all that stuff, and it also may make the video a bit long or long, something like that, yeah. you know? So not everything okay. is recorded, so... Um, okay. But I still find it interesting to see um, the beginning of the process when the artist is still trying fig to figure stuff out. Mm. Uh, I usually kind of like that part where you basically see the artist... Uh, working, walking through his mind and basically trying to figure stuff out. How do I do this? Okay, this doesn't work. I'm going to try this one. It doesn't work either. Okay, let's try this and then it works. And then it kind of explains why this one worked compared to another one that didn't work. Yeah. So it's still interesting to see that in a process. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. It's, it's great to see that. Um, and I haven't done that in a while because most of my stuff at the moment is... Um, just kind of painting over what I've got mm -hmm. um, at the moment. Probably in another couple of months or so, I might be able to paint something new, hopefully, uh, which would be great. Um, yeah. You're basically painting over some old stuff you did to yeah. make it better? Yeah, at the moment. Um, I'm working on this book at the moment that I'm working mm -hmm. on. That, yeah, I'm really getting towards publishing. Um, hmm. it's it's an illustration book uh it's yeah it's a children's illustrated book um oh that's fantastic that I've created so yeah it's it's 14 pages that i'm just kind of um yeah painting over that's what i've been doing at the moment and it's been Kid a long process but yeah yeah kid illustration must be so much fun to do it's it's fantastic i really love um, watching some, um, reading through some um, kids' book. The the art style is just so different and so nice. I love it. The colors are very different most <laughs> of the time. It's very soft and very, it's it's adorable. And I really like child children uh, illustrations. Yeah, it's fun. I really enjoy mm. it. Um, yeah. Would you do you have any? more kind of advice for any beginner artists um well i've already said like sometimes give yourself a break hmm. um do a lot of studies of like my best advice and it's the advice everyone's going to give you it's do a lot of drawing observation drawing like hmm. you 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 go outside you go in the city you draw buildings you draw um anatomy so human um humans uh, walking and doing stuff uh you draw props you do everything basically everything you can see you draw it and not only it's going to help you getting better and understanding shapes lighting and um even perspective for buildings but it's also um not necessarily sub uh it's a bit subconscious but it's it's going to fill up your visual library a lot um, let's say if someone asks you to draw, um, let's say a classical building, if you didn't, if you never drew any classical building, you'll never know what are the principal features of a classical building. Well, if you, if you've done a lot of studies of different type of architecture, well, you'll know, maybe you'll have to search for references, but at least you, you have a, a good solid base and you know where to search. So I'd say, so yeah, drawing by observation, 
expand your visual library a lot. Um, so I was talking about Pinterest a bit before, but literally anything you can find is good to learn. Um, it could be documentaries, it could be going to a museum and taking pictures of um, of pottery. I, I usually find pottery quite interesting, um, like pots and stuff like that. I really like it for some reason. That The shapes are always interesting, even if you're doing a building or anything, I don't know, anything basically. But don't only um, stay on Pinterest and that's it. Go, try to find your references somewhere else. Because on Pinterest, it's it's basically everyone's going there, so there's a good chance that your um, your reference has already been used by another artist and already already been processed. So it's all right to do something a bit the same as another artist, but um, if you do something truly original, uh, try to take your own reference pictures uh, where you go to museums or I don't know exposition exhibits of arts. Take your own pictures, and um, and also don't be afraid to use references. I see so many work online, they're like, oh, I did that without any references. Well, maybe you should have. <laughs> it's, it's sometimes it's, it's like there's some kind of taboo about using references, but literally everybody does it and there is absolutely nothing wrong. And it's, it's just bringing you so much stuff that you maybe wouldn't have think about. So just use references. It's, mm it's gonna give you a lot it's gonna basically make your design much richer um yeah so that that's the two main problems that say that i see in um in being beginner's work don't be afraid to use references and do a lot of drawing observation drawing um landscape studies lighting studies um anything you can take basically do it all over again and um be because even if you want to do, I understand it's not necessarily fun to draw um, a chair like 15 times. It's, it sucks, I know, but it will come at some point, like when you're going to, will, you will have to do an interesting design, let's say a sci-fi design. Well, every design is based on real life stuff. So if you didn't do any real life stuff, well, your design is not going to be believable. So if you want to, your design, imaginary design to be believable, you need to have a base of real. So that's why we usually study real first. And then based on that, you can do um, imaginary stuff. I had an exercise when I was at school and it was actually a great exercise. So we had the picture of a building. So first we had to draw the building um like do a study a sketch of the building and then once we we did that we needed to transform the building into a sci-fi type of building so the the, um, the picture was actually the um, belem tower in portugal oh, cool. and we had to make it yeah cause a lot of people study that that tower because mm -hmm. it's really interesting and we had to make it um sci-fi so i don't know turn it into a factory mm. um this kind of stuff is actually really good, really good exercise because you've got a base of real, and then you need to analyze it and and uh, create a new design to make it different. So that's a really good exercise. So if you want to still do the study part, that's really important to your progress, and then still have a little part of fun where you design stuff from imagination. That's a really good exercise. Yeah, well, that sounds awesome. Um, yeah, it sounds really awesome interesting experience to do i uh, think to do i've done something like that as well where you know you take a you know an element and then you you know, design it and create it in a different way which mm. is a really helpful process and helpful exactly because <laughs> let's say let's say you want to you want to make a dragon um what a, what is a dragon basically it's the body of a cheetah or the body of um a big cat let's say like muscle or muscly and uh, like the, the muscle kind of work like that like a big cat hmm. um you've got kind of the same skin texture as an alligator or a reptile hmm. and then you've got the wings of a bird it's the same structure so if you want to do the anatomy of a dragon you need to do the anatomy of three or four other animals first hmm. if you want your dragon to be believable basically yeah. so that's why you you really need to study this kind of animals and then well turn it into another creature why not 
Exactly. To make it fun. Awesome. Well, it's been awesome having you um, today. It's it's been great. Um, thanks for having me. That was yeah. a pleasure. You are welcome. Um, and thanks everyone who checked out this video, whether it was on Twitch or it was on YouTube. Um, you know, feel free to comment below if you enjoyed the video. Um, you've got your links down below for LOD Mondoli. And she's been a great pleasure to have in today, and hopefully, um, yeah. I'll, I'll well, hopefully thanks a lot. You've been a great host. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, hopefully you keep going and keep working hard. Yeah, I will. <laughs> keep drawing, everyone, and see you in the next video. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.